<laughs> Good morning everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy author of fantasy romance and romantic fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. I should turn it. I'm here with my first cup of coffee showing off my kitties. I guess they make it so that if you right handed and you hold the handle of the mug you can see the design yourself. But what if you want to show it off to other people only if you're left handed. Mmm. Yummy. Ah, delicious. Uh, today is Tuesday, June 1st. Beautiful morning. Beautiful rain washed morning here in Santa Fe. Uh, the birds are singing right on cue and the garden is blooming. It has really just all of a sudden leaps and bounds uh, looking beautiful all kinds of flowers um, and we got more rain overnight so it's fresh smelling and the ground is slightly damp and the plants are, are very happy and so am I. Ah, we had a very stormy day yesterday gratifyingly stormy we got quite big lightning and um, some big I guess some rain during the day we got more during the night but some during the day but it was like the big black fulminous clouds it was um, it was super cool. I also got my 3000 words yesterday so that made me happy and I am right at 70,000 words on bright familiar. Um, still trying to figure out <laughs> it's going to happen but feeling pretty zen about it. Um, yeah you know the the story has been a whole lot about Nick and Gabriel and which may sound I mean like of course it's about Nick and Gabriel but I thought it was going to be a lot more external arc than it is and there's plenty of external stuff but um you know it's definitely putting pieces in place and building their relationship slightly different way that I've done it before which always is good right. Coil chuck in the background not full coil train just slight chucking. So so yeah and I got business done yesterday so that was nice and watched an episode of Lucifer. Did I tell you guys that I've been watching Lucifer? Uh, I'd never seen it before so I just started on first season a couple of weeks ago and David doesn't like it but I am thoroughly hooked. I I love this show. Um, the I really like what they're doing with the conflicts between Lucifer and Amenadiel and Mazakin and uh, I love the portrayal of Lucifer Morningstar. Uh, it's excellent show. Uh, I'm enjoying it so much. So I've been um, you know I talk about this often that I don't usually watch stuff that David doesn't want to watch because um, I just don't usually spend my time that way. If I'm not spending time with him then I'm going to read or something like that. But uh, Lucifer I have been taking the time to to watch that. So when we were in the mountain gods and they were all at the casino uh, you know my TV there I could read I could sign in in my Netflix account which was kind of cool. So I watched an episode of Lucifer there and I watched one on my laptop. <laughs> so this is very unlike me. But I am um, it's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. And um, yeah so so yeah yesterday was just a good day. Let's do earrings. So these earrings I think these may have been my mom's. These are weird earrings. See if you're on video you can see I guess maybe I should describe them first. 
All right, let's do this. So they're an unusual structure. They are gold, a gold ring with a gold sun at the bottom and a little gold heart dangling. So I love the design, all of my things, uh, you know, all of the things I like, but you'll notice that, or I will describe for you that the ring is set so that when you put the post through your ear, the ring hangs parallel to your head and both earrings. If you put them on so that the post goes from front to back, which I believe is the way that it should be. Although I have tried it the other direction too, because I feel like I'm forever getting these earrings to hang correctly. And they're not double sided. So if I put and if I put the post through my ear like that and it goes back, then this one, the right side hangs so that the sun face faces my neck. It doesn't like hang forward. You know, it's like if I twist it, it'll sort of hang forward, but then it starts to twist back and face my neck. So that means that from the side, someone's going to see the back of the earring they which isn't pretty i mean it's just not pretty but even on the other side if i you know where the sun face is facing out half the time it's kind of like three quarters swiveled so that the back of the earring is like facing front and they just never look right to me i should like read have them redone or something because i actually like the earrings in general and i like the big style and i like the gold I cannot understand why they are crafted this way. What, what is the deal? I mean, sometimes I've wondered if they're like meant to go through like a septum or something, except it would be way too big. <laughs> I'm just for fun. I'm going to try this because see, see, it looks like that. Like if you would put it through the septum here, I'm putting it on my nose, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but then it would hang down over my mouth, right? It's clearly too big for that. And why would you have two of them? Here I am with my big bull ring going through my nose. I, someone explain this to me. Are they for nipples? I mean, I guess that would actually work if they both went through your nipples and hung like that. But I don't think someone who knows more about nipple piercings than I do might know. I mean, you don't have this kind of clasp on a nipple piercing, right? But that's actually how it looks like it's meant to face forward in that way. So, uh, yeah, and I am not getting my nipples pierced. Maybe that's TMI. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, I've talked to women who have had their nipples pierced and they're like, oh, but it increases sensitivity. And I'm like, why do you want to increase sensitivity? Aren't they sensitive enough? I mean, sorry, TMI, mine are sensitive enough. Uh, mine are sensitive enough that, uh, you know, like they get sore and chafe if I don't wear a bra. Um, I've also never nursed children. So I understand that that will toughen your nipples like nothing else. That's one of the little, that's one of those things that a lot of people don't talk about. You know, like, oh, the beauty of nursing your infant and, you know, it's so intimate and so wonderful. And, you know, like if you talk to women who have actually nursed babies, you know, they're like, it fucking hurts. Your nipples get chafed, they crack, they bleed, the, the little shits bite down <laughs> on your nipples. Um, you know, it's, it's still of course, joyful and nurturing and all of those things, but, uh, I can't remember. I was having a conversation with someone not long ago and we were talking about how like there's this sort of vast silence around the fact that um, that nursing is so hard on your nipples. All of these things that like are ban male gaze society uh, doesn't want to hear about, right? Don't talk to me about your sore nipples because I don't care. I care. You can come talk to me about your sore nipples over coffee anytime because clearly I'm going to talk about it with you. <laughs> so, um, the, the, this is 
the thing of the day that I want to mention. Um, for some reason I have been getting an avalanche of Facebook friend requests lately. And most of them, I mean, it's not the, the creepy military dudes or the guys in like surgical outfits that I'm supposed to believe are all widowers and looking for me. <laughs> it's like actually, you know, the odds of me dating a, a general who is in the Middle East is like so vanishingly low. Um, you know, like I know they're not actually going for a target audience here, but um, it's like not your girl guys. You know, d if they wanted to get me, they'd send me like a moody poet or um, yeah, actually I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> going to mention exactly what kind of type would get me. But yeah, military general, um, even surgeon. Now, you know, those, those guys have huge egos and who wants that? Uh, so avalanche of friend requests, lots of mutual friends. I don't know if Facebook is like encouraging people to ask or if I'm just that popular, who knows? So anyway, I go through this thing and I wish there was a word for it. You know that moment where you're considering accepting a friend request and I feel like this is very very Facebook you know because I look at them all to make sure that they're not potential spammers and I feel like I have a pretty good good eye for that. Um, you know I'm sorry if you are in the military and uh, have photos of you in uniform and you are legit trying to friend me. Um, I don't know. Change your header photo because <laughs> I uh, that's an auto delete for me. It's like no, I'm you're a spammer. So I do look at them all and there are ones that are easy friends, ones that are easy deletes and it's those marginal ones, right? Where you know that you're probably going to regret friending this person you don't have a really strong reason not to. And I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt except if you're in military uniform or wearing a surgeon's cap. <laughs> and I I'll hesitate and I'll think okay I'm I'm gonna accept this friend request and I'm just sure I'm gonna regret this. There's gotta be a word for that moment for that feeling of um not good enough a reason to not do it. Um, but at the same time I just know. So some of these people I've been uh, friending and one good thing about the dubious cases is they often shit the bed immediately uh, to not to put too fine a point upon it <laughs> is that they will DM me. Um, you know the the, the spammers will DM, hi, how are you doing? Hi, beautiful, that kind of thing. And then you, it's like, oh, yay, unfriend and block. Easy, easy peasy. Um, but some people wait a little bit longer. So I got a new one the other day. And so this is not a scammer. This is an author. <laughs> I almost want to put that in quotation marks, but he does have published books. He, DMs me or message, you know, PMs me, I guess on Facebook, it's private message. So he sends this to me via private message. And I'm going to read this to you guys, uh, redacting the details. Um, you know, why am I protecting this dipshit? I don't know, but I, I think he's mainly a dipshit. So he sends me this PM. It's a long PM, too. I have received thousands of, rev of reviews on novels. Um, how am I going to do these titles? Okay. I'm going to change the first word to X. Okay. On novels X hole X edge and X X on an X night. None all caps more precious than the one I received today from this 96 year old world war II vet world war II vet also all caps be hard to imagine flying a TBM Avenger off the USS white plane CVE-66 
back in the day heart. Hi, dipshit author name. <laughs> Just started reading your X edge again. At 96, a good story is just as interesting with the 10th reading as it was the first rainbow. I see why Burt Reynolds bought the film rights to your first novel X hole. And then there's a link and a photo. Um, yeah, I, I, Facebook may have inserted the photo. So, okay. I, I almost wanted to do like a blog post on this. Maybe I will tomorrow. Maybe uh, so don't do both. Don't listen to this podcast and read the blog post tomorrow because I feel like this deserves a breakdown. A don't do this. <laughs> don't PM people your book ad. Okay. Don't B don't friend people with the express purpose of spamming them with your book ad. See, I know I'm holding up fingers and it makes no sense, but we're going to just assume that like the letter translates to the one to the number. Uh, or I could just like not use my fingers. Okay. Except I'll lose track. Um, C <laughs> don't send me your obviously fabricated message from a fake reader uh, because no no reader <laughs> sends a message like this. Nobody says things like at 96 a good story is just as interesting with the 10th reading as it was the first. That's not how people talk. <laughs> not even 96 year olds. He wouldn't say I see why Burt Reynolds bought the film rights your first books uh you know and sadly enough Burt Reynolds is now dead um uh, rest in peace Burt you are awesome uh, so the fact that Burt bought the film rights is now <laughs> you know like a, a non-starter if it even happened um pro tip lots of authors sell options yet yeah, yeah you know that's what it's actually called by somebody who knows what they're talking about uh that they option uh, the book or the option, the potential screenplay from the book. Um, and it never goes anywhere. It, that happens a lot. I'm not saying that selling film rights wouldn't be option. Uh, awesome. I have never sold film rights to any of my books. I have never sold the options. I would love to, if you're interested in the options, call my agent, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So you're not going to have someone saying, I see why Burt Reynolds, how would he even know? How, how would he know that Burt Reynolds bought the option? Um, why is, uh, I'm, I'm just going to stop there. I mean, there's, there's so much absurdity. So then if you're going to put together your spammy book ad that you're PMing people to annoy them and which you will be then unfriended and blocked by a whole lot of people once you do this. So, you know, if you're going to do it, you get one shot. I mean, why do we have to have 96 in there twice? <laughs> None more precious than the one I received today from this 96 year old World War II vet. Oh, wait, we could even do the math on that. I mean, are there any? World War II vets that age? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe there's a few left, but I, th yeah, let's see. That's probably, there probably are. Okay. But still, I mean, why is 96 such a critical piece of information that we have to have it twice and then be hard to imagine flying a TBM Avenger off the USS White Plains CVE 66 back in the day. Um, yes, because I have no idea what any of those words mean. <laughs> uh, the USS White Plains was maybe a ship. Were they flying airplanes off of, I mean, I guess the ship was somewhere else. I think White Plains, New York. Anyway, I am totally confused by this. 
I, I've lost track of my letters. I have, I'm not the audience for this book. I have no idea what this guy is even talking about. And I never wanted this message in the first place. So, so many things wrong with this. Um, and I was reading this to Dorinda yesterday and I had her laughing so hard she was in tears. So I don't know if you guys were laughing. Maybe I didn't get to the point of having you in tears, but, um, it's just a bewildering world. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, on that note, I've been babbling on for 20 minutes. I'm going to go get to work. I'm going to turn my coffee cup around. So you see the pretty kitties. Uh, I'll remind you all that first cup of coffee is part of the frolic media podcast network, and you will find more podcasts that you love at frolic.media slash podcasts. And I will talk to you all on Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye.